Thank you very much for joining us this evening. This is the Wednesday, November 17th, 2021 uh, Board of Directors meeting of the Denver Regional Council of Governments. I'm Ashley Stolzman, the board chair. And tonight we're having the meeting electronically and it's being recorded because of COVID-19. And so um, as we call the meeting to order, we on the staff side will be pulling people over from the attendee side to the panelist side just as quickly as they can. And don't worry if it takes just a moment, um, we'll, get you, we'll get you settled and in the right place. Um, if you feel like we've missed you, go ahead and click the raise hand feature so we make sure to move you over. And you'll get a pop-up on your screen when the staff moves you that just lets you know, um, you have to acknowledge the pop-up and say, yes, I wanna become a panelist. So um, we will go ahead and start the roll call um, and we will resolve any names if you're in the panelist side or the attendee side, we'll get it all resolved at the end and make sure we get the attendance correct. And just before I turn it over to roll call, I'll introduce uh, new members and alternates. We do have a number of members um, who have become a new title. So we have a number of members who are now mayor that were formerly council members. So congratulations uh, to all of you with new roles and um, congratulations to all folks who have won the election and thank you for the service of all members that were former Dr. Cog members that are no longer with us. We actually only have one new member tonight. I do expect at next month's meeting we'll have several more, but I'd like to welcome Sally Chafee and she is the governor's appointee for our board and I just uh, warmest welcome to Sally and just if we could get some clapping, I know it's hard to virtually clap, but. Thank you. Clapping is necessary, but I appreciate it. Great to see you, Sally. And um, just for folks who are new to Dr. Cog, uh, the governor's appointee has always uh, been a, just a critical role and a great source of information and a great conduit of communication. Um, Adam uh, Zarin was our previous rep in the role and um, having that relationship going into COVID was just a real benefit for board members who did have a chance to know him just to have that line of communication to be able to answer questions and and help um, with the regional networking. So welcome aboard Sally and we all look forward to working with you. And so I will turn it over to Melinda Stevens for a roll call of the board members. Melinda, if you're ready, take it away. Absolutely, thank you, Madam Chair. All right, and here we go. Aaron Brockett of Boulder. Present. Adam Cushing of Brighton. Chris Giordanelli of Brighton. Allison Coombs of Aurora. Present. Lindsay Smith of Westminster. Bill Gipp of Erie. Sarah Laughlin of Erie. Bill Van Meter of RTD. Bob Pfeiffer of Arvada. John Marriott of Arvada. Bud Starker of Wheat Ridge. Claire Levy of Boulder County. This is Matt Jones. I'm substituting for her. I'm a Boulder County Commissioner. I'm the alternate. Thank you so much, Mr. Jones. Colleen Whitlow of Mead. David Adams of Mead. David Spellman of Blackhawk. Deborah Mulvey of Castle Pines. Present. Don Cognac of Firestone. David Whelan of Firestone. George Lance of Greenwood Village. Dave Kerber of Greenwood Village. George Teal of Douglas County. Here. Jacob LeBuer of Lakewood. Dana Gutwine of Lakewood. Jim Dale of Golden. Here. Jim Kumerly of Lock Bowie. Jamie Jeffrey of Lock Bowie. Jason Gray of Castle Rock. Tim Dietz is here for Jason Gray. Cal Thank you so much, Mr. Dietz. <clears throat> Jeff Baker of Arapahoe County. Present. Jerry Valdez of Littleton. Pamela Grove of Littleton. Jessica Sandgren of Thornton. Julia Marvin of Thornton. I'm here, it's Jessica Sandgren. I couldn't hit mute, unmute fast enough, sorry. Sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> All right, Joan Peck of Longmont. Here. John Dyack of Parker. Here. 
Josie Cockrell of Foxfield. Here. Julie Duran Mullica of North Glen. Joyce Downing of North Glen. Cara Tanucci of Central City. Jeremy Fay of Central City. Catherine Whitman of Decono. Jackie Thomas of Decono. Kevin Flynn of Denver. I'm here. Christopher Larson of Nederland. Larry Bidham of Bennett. Here. Linda Montoya of Federal Heights. Present. Cheryl Wink of Inglewood. Lynette Kelsey of Georgetown. Here. Margo Ramson of Bomar. Michael Hillman of Idaho Springs. Neil Shaw of Superior. Here. Nicholas Angelo of Lyons. Holly Rogan of Lyons. Nicholas Williams of Denver. Williams of Denver. Here. Nicole Frank of Commerce City. Craig Hurst of Commerce City. Present. Paul Sutton of Morrison. Sean Foray of Morrison. Rachel Binkley of Glendale. Ryan Toucher of Glendale. Randy Wheel of Cherry Hills Village. Happy to be here. Thank you. Randy Wheelock of Clear Creek County. Rebecca White of CDOT. Here. Roy Palmer of Columbine Valley. Gail Christie of Columbine Valley. Sally Chafee of CDOT. Here. Sally Daigle of Sheridan. Here. Perfect. Stephanie Walton of Lafayette. Hello. Steve Odoricio of Adams County. Stephen Conklin of Edgewater. Here. Tammy Maurer of Centennial. Here. Tracy Craft Tharp of Jefferson County. Here. Webb Sill of Gilpin County. William Lindstedt of Broomfield. Here. Wynne Shaw of Lone Tree. Here. All right, and with that, I will hand it back to our chair for anyone that we may have missed during the roll. Thank you. So we see that um, Director Steve Odoricio is on the call, Director Bud Starker is on the call, and Director Whitlow is on the call. Um, if any other folks weren't able to get unmuted or uh, feel they weren't heard in attendance, if you raise your hand at this time, we'll get it sorted. Um, Bill Van Meter is here. And anyone else? All right, thank you all very much. And um, we have a quorum, so we'll get started. Could I please get a motion from a member to approve the agenda? Um, so moved. Um, thank you very much. I'll just call on Director uh, Jeffrey. I think I can get unmuted, sorry. I move to approve the agenda. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Director Shaw? I second that. Thank you. Thank you. And there's some background noise if folks could mute. Um, that would be helpful. And then just unmute um, when you're ready to speak. Thank you so much. Any discussion of the motion, please raise your hand. Seeing none, all those in favor, please unmute and say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Any opposed? The motion carries. That takes us to our um, <clears throat> report of the chair. And so I will turn it over to the Performance Engage and Engagement Committee Chair, Director Conklin for a report. Thank you very much. We had our uh, last meeting on Wednesday, November 3rd. We had two items on the agenda. Uh, one of those was to talk about a return to in-person meetings, which we continue to, to work on and look at with staff. That conversation will continue uh, when we meet next. Uh, and then we also uh, did the executive director performance review. Uh, I want to thank everybody on the board that completed the uh, assessment tool. 
Uh, obviously, I want to thank staff that participated and all of the, the folks that uh, Doug works with across the region. Uh, we had a very good meeting, good discussion with the executive or the, with the uh, performance and engagement committee. And Doug and I will be sitting down soon when I will kind of brief him on the overall uh, evaluation. We will also get that to him in writing. It was a very good evaluation. And Doug, we appreciate all of your work. And that completes my report. Thank you very much, um, Director Conklin. And then um, Director Shaw, um, if we could get a report on finance and budget, Director Shaw is the chair of that committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Finance and Budget Committee first convened as Regional Response, a nonprofit corporation established by Dr. Cog for our periodic meeting to review the six month audit results, bringing our audit in line with Dr. Cog's fiscal year. Next, uh, Finance and Budget met to authorize the executive director to execute a contract amendment with Enterprise Rent-A-Car of Pittsburgh, extending the contract to end June 30th, 2022, with no other contract changes. We also, also authorized him to negotiate and execute a contract with Sanborn Map in an amount now to exceed $730,000 and Near Map in an amount not to exceed $450,000 for 2022 and 2023 aerial imagery and related projects and services and to collect payment from participating parties for the same. To amend, uh, we also gave him the authorization to amend the existing Complete Streets Toolkit consultant contract in a total authorization amount not to exceed $160,000 to conduct initial implementation activities associated with the toolkit. We also received a presentation of the Dr. Cog six month financial audit, bringing it to coincide with Dr. Cog's fiscal year end with no significant findings. I offer my thanks to Cl Clifton Larson Allen and deep appreciation to Jenny Dock and her staff for the work they perform every day that resulted in these excellent audit results. Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Um, thank you very much, Director Shaw. And just uh, wanna clarify, so I try my best to watch all of the various things that are going on between the chat and the texts and um, the conversation that's going on and the hands raised. And so it sometimes takes just a moment to resolve something. So there's a point of order that Director Odoricio has put in the chat and I just will turn it over to Executive Director Rex to clarify. And just before I do that, um, I just wanna make sure everybody's clear. It is absolutely our policy to be as inclusive of all the communities as possible, ensure everyone an opportunity. But we do have a very specific process for having communities nominate members and alternates. And so at the Dr. Cog board meeting, older, only members and alternates can participate in the voting. And so I think there might be a little hiccup with how that was done this time that will absolutely get resolved for next time. So uh, with that, I just wanna confirm executive director X, if we um, have any other members or alternates we need to promote. Madam Chair, I am not seeing any at this point. I will ask, um, because I just don't know, um, to Director Odoricio's point, um, uh, uh, Sarah, Sarah Numella, she, um, I, I don't know if she, if, if that was a, a formal appointment that was made to the Dr. Cog board that we're just not aware of yet. Um, I would ask that maybe we could call on her to, to ask that question, Madam Chair. Well, so I'm fine. I'm absolutely, if that's the process that, that this group, if that's the pleasure of the group, I think we can go that way. Typically, I, I believe what our rules state is that we get a let city letterhead that informs, you know, the Dr. Cox staff of who the member and the alternate are, and they can be changed at any time, but I just don't believe we've gotten that yet. Um, but it, at the, at the pleasure of the board, if you all would like me to call on um, Sarah Nermella, who and, and ask um, what process has taken place. I'm happy to do that. I just don't have any background on that to make the call on my own. Any members want to weigh in at this point? Director Odorisi, I'll let you weigh in just since you brought the point forward. Yeah, no, um, <clears throat> they may not have gotten the letter. I did, and, and even myself, I didn't know about that formal uh, process. So my apologies, I was just, uh, She's one of our city council members and said, hey, I can't get in yet. She was appointed on Monday. So 
if you guys want to, if, if there's some processes we need to follow. Um, and then do we still get to haze new people too? I mean, uh, no. So if actually, if, you know, if I could get just a vote from, if I could get a vote from the board or a motion from the board um, as, you know, whether to um, allow Sarah to participate as the member this time, if she was appointed by her board on Monday, um, it seems reasonable. It seems if the board uh, is in agreement to that, we could do that today, but I would hate to make the decision on my own without the board voting. Director Dale. So moved. Thank you. So we have a motion um, to promote Sarah Nermella uh, to panelist as the Westminster Council representative. Is there a second? Second, Jessica. Thank you, uh, Director Sangren. Seconded the motion. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? All right, Sarah, welcome aboard. Sorry for the um, awkward transition, just trying to make sure that we're following our processes. And so I'd like to welcome our new member, Sarah Nermella. I would have introduced you at the beginning as well. So sorry about that. And everybody, please welcome Sarah. Thank you. So sorry. It was just done on Monday. So <laughs> Great to see you. Yeah. All right. And so with that, I have no other report of the chair and I'll turn it over to Executive Director Rex. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just have a few items, um, but I would like to remind you about two informational items that are in the packet this evening. The first is a request for you to review last year's policy statement on state legislative issues. Um, we're staff, we're, we're not expect, we're not anticipating any changes to it. We went through it and felt feel pretty comfortable about where it is. Um, but if you have suggestions, please get those to us by December 3rd so that we can uh, prepare the packet for a vote on the, the new legislative um, um, legislative issues package uh, at the December board meeting. And second, uh, the second informational item that's in there is uh, our, our regional planning and development division has put together another data brief. This one highlights the influence of COVID that has had on, um, on construction in our region. It's, it's another very insightful brief from staff. So I would uh, encourage you to, uh, to use that at your, at your leisure. There's some good data, you've got some good statistics in there. If you, and if you need any background information, um, some of the background data associated with that, please just reach out to us. We'd be happy to, uh, to share that with you or, or your staff. All right, the two items I had tonight are uh, first on the award celebration. Um, as you know, we have our annual award celebration normally in the spring of each year. That wasn't the case last year uh, due to COVID. We had it in the fall, a virtual event. Um, but in 2022, it is certainly our intent to celebrate all the award winners in person at Empower Field at Mile High on Wednesday, uh, April 27. And uh, it's been uh, it's been a couple of years since we invited nominations for Dr. Cog Awards. So, but I'm delighted to, tonight to announce that um, as of today, the nominations are open for three awards. That's the Way to Go Awards, which is bestowed uh, in recognition of excellence in promoting commute options at the individual and corporate level, the Metro Vision Awards, which recognize a project program or plan which has significantly contributed to the region's progress towards our uh, Metro Vision goals. And last but certainly not least, the John V. Christensen Memorial Award, which has been given out since 1973, and uh, which honors an exceptional individual for their work to foster uh, regional collaboration. And you will all remember that, um, that uh, Mayor Ron Rakowski received that award uh, last year. Uh, so the nomination period uh, will remain open until January 7th. Um, so if you have any recommendations, please make those on our website at drcog.org, or of course, uh, you know, we'll be sending out some additional information via email, but we just wanted to give you a heads up that that's coming this evening. And last but not least, um, on the affordable housing grants, I've mentioned this over the last several several months now, um, uh, the Department of Local Affairs is accepting applications for several new affordable housing grant programs. The next application deadline is fastly approaching on December 6th. This is likely the next to last funding round. So if your community is interested in any of these funds, I encourage you to finalize and submit your grant, grant applications um, as soon as possible. Um, on, the same, on the same topic, I, I did want to offer congratulations to Adams County, Centennial, Erie, Golden, and Wheat Ridge. All were awarded funds in the first round. Um, 
We're also aware uh, that uh, another seven of our members submitted applications in the second round. So we're hoping that that group is equally successful. So thank you all so very much. If you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or Brad Calvert at any time and, and uh, we'll help you along the, uh, along the road in these grant applications. So with that, Madam Chair, that's my report. Thank you very much, Executive Director X. Now that takes us to our public comment period. Up to 45 minutes is now allocated for public comment and each speaker will be limited to three minutes. I would request that there are no public comment on issues where a prior public hearing was held before the board. And as soon as we're uh, finished with public comment, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Any members of the public care to comment this evening? You can indicate that you have interest by clicking the raise hand feature that you'll find at the bottom of your panel. Seeing none, that takes us back to the agenda. And next on it is the consent agenda. Could I please get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Um, Director Coombs. Move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Director Starker. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion of the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everyone. The motion carries. Our first action item tonight is to select representatives to the nominating committee. You'll find the information about this topic as attachment B in your packet. And I'll turn it over to Executive Director Rex to take us through this agenda item. Thank you again, Madam Chair. Um, and it's that time of year again that we sit, seat the new nominating committee. And the purpose of this evening's request is to select uh, one of the members from, from the board. The board gets one vote. And just, just a little bit of background on this. So the committee itself consists of six members, three of which we already know. Um, so the immediate past chair, which is uh, Director Dyack, um, the p &E selected their representative, which is Director Joan Peck. Finance and Budget has also select, selected their member, which is Director Jessica Sangren. And the city and county of Denver has a seat on there. Uh, we don't know which of our two is gonna serve on that in, in that uh, seat yet. Um, and then the board uh, gets to select one representative and the board chair gets to, to, to select one board representative. Um, so just a, a little bit of background there. So the responsibilities of the nominee committee is to recommend a slate of, of board officers for the coming year also, uh, they're responsible for recommending uh, representatives to serve on the Performance and Engagement Committee and the Finance and Budget Committee when that time comes in early 2022. We are also anticipating that the, uh, that the nominating committee will be responsible for recommending the four seats that Dr. Cog has on the newly, for, the newly created uh, Front Range Passenger Rail District Board. Um, so that, that's exciting and uh, we're, we're looking forward to, to moving that process along as well. Um, so if you are interested in serving on the nominating committee, we will be uh, re requesting uh, nominations from the floor this evening. Um, just, just remember that you must have served on the Dr. Cog board no less than one year as a member or alternate. Um, and you must be a current board member, meaning no alternates can serve on the nominating committee itself. Also, uh, please note that if you are on the nominating committee, you can not be a nominee, nominee for a board, off, for board officer for the upcoming year. However, this does not preclude you from serving as one of the Dr. Cog board reps on the Front Range Passenger Rail District Board. And that was based on conversations that we've had with the Performance and Engagement Committee, and that seems to make sense. And there's nothing in the in the committee guidelines that suggest that um, you, know, you can't do that, but it's very specific about your inability to serve as a board officer um, if you're on the nominee. Um, one last final note that I might just mention that in consideration of appointments to the nominee committee, the committee guidelines does state that, um, that there shall be, shall be given, um, uh, uh, the, the, the nominee committee should be a broad representation of the board, uh, taking into, into account community size, geographic location, uh, uh, the rate of growth, county, municipal, uh, rural and suburban and other factors. So there's, you know, basically just try, we try to make this as, as equitable across the region as, as, as we can, based on um, those that, that have a willingness to serve. And Madam Chair, I'll turn it back to you to uh, request to see if there's any nominations. 
Thank you. And just before we take nominations, I just want to confirm uh, if anyone has any questions that they have a chance to raise their hand and ask the executive director any questions they have about the process. Are there any questions from members? All right, seeing none, um, at this time would love if members would let us know if they have interest in serving on the nominating committee or if you'd like to nominate someone else, that's also appropriate. Director Peck. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, Director Julie Mullica could not be here tonight, but she asked me to put her name forward. So uh, Director Julie Mullica from the city of North Glen, I would like to put her name forward. Thank you, Director Peck. I thought I did see Julie, but now that I'm looking through the names, I don't see her. So thank you very much, Director Peck. Director Flynn. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I don't know if that one needs a second before we proceed or do nominations just require a single motion? Um, so yeah. I, my plan was to ask the members if they are nominated by someone else, if they would accept the nomination. <laughs> and okay. uh, typically we have just had people bring their names forward and then they'll be voted okay. on. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, Madam Chair and, and fellow uh, directors, I would like to nominate someone I've gotten to know uh, pretty well as a very deeply experienced municipal and also uh, school uh, issues in her very small uh, suburban inner ring suburb, uh, city of Sheridan, and that is Sally Daigle. I've had the honor of working with Sally and found her to be, uh, she was very instrumental in bringing together some of the forces that ended up with a hugely successful project in my district, and that is the Loretto Heights campus redevelopment. She is the person who brought to the table the historic preservation developer who next month will celebrate the uh, restoration of Pancratia Hall on that campus into 74 affordable housing units. Uh, it, I think, it, and uh, also three days before the ribbon cutting on December 16th, the Denver City Council will vote on making that only the second Denver landmark building in Southwest Denver, uh, south of Sixth Avenue, west of the Platte. I love to tell the people down in city and county building that history in Denver is more than Molly Brown. Uh, there are other parts of this city that, that matter as well. And I found Sally just to be a great ally. And I think she served on the uh, nominating committee last year as well. And uh, so I'd like to nominate her again if she is willing to accept. Uh, she is term limited and uh, will we'll be with us only two more years, but she's been a valued member of Dr. Cobb. Thank you. Thank you, Director Flynn. Director Daigle, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Flynn. That was very nice. Any other members uh, interested in serving on the nominating committee? Um, I do see Director Mullica listed. I don't know if maybe she was not able to attend and had to just drop off and left her name on, but I just want to give Director Mullica a chance if you are there. I'll second her if she needs that. But... Oh, she doesn't. I just wanted to give her a chance if because I see her name in the list. So I just wanted to give her the opportunity to say that she was interested if she's here, but. The, we have another meeting in Adams County that might I see. us up. Oh, she says she's having audio issues. No problem. Sorry about that, Julie. I was not trying to put you on the spot, just giving you a chance. All right, um, seeing no other nominations, um, I would offer a proposal. So there are two seats. There's the board representative and the board chair representative left to fill. Uh, so seeing that we have two folks uh, that, are, that have demonstrated service commitment to Dr. Cog in the region that have put their names forward, I would propose uh, by maybe we could get a motion uh, of acclamation to support those two members to the nominating committee. Director Starker. So moved. Is there a second? Um, Director Coombs. Second. And um, I just want to, before we move on to the vote, there's a motion and a second on the floor for Director Mullica and for Director Daigle to serve on the nominating committee. Um, I just wanted to um, ask any members if they would like to hear any other biographical information about where the members come from. I know when we voted on committee members in the past in this virtual environment, it's um, been hard for some people who don't know everyone on the group. So if there's any interest in hearing more about the members, I'm happy to tell everyone a little bit about both of them. Seeing no hands up, then we will just go ahead um, and move on to the vote. So all those in favor of um, Director Daigle and Director Mullica, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, everyone. The motion carries. And I would like to thank everyone very much for their service um, to the nominating committee. Um, and my agenda got hidden from me, darn it. All right, here we go. So next on the agenda is discussion of the FY 2022 to 2025 Transportation Improvement Program Amendment. Todd Cottrell, our senior transportation planner in transportation planning and operations will take us through that. And if you're following along and looking for the material, you'll find it under attachment C in your packet. Todd? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and good evening, board members. So this evening, we have just one amendment for your consideration to the current 22 to 25 Transportation Improvement Program. And actually, it's a recon reconsideration of an amendment from your September discussions that would add $300,000 in state legislative transit funds for the Castle Rock Mobility Hub. And this would be going into the CDOT Region 1 Mobility Hub pool. So during those dis board discussions in September, uh, Castle Rock express, expressed concerns about the location of the mobility hub, and it was requested by the board that CDOT, Castle Rock, and Dr. Cog all meet to develop a mutually agreeable solution and to bring um, before bringing the amendment back to the board for reconsideration. So on October 14th, um, all three parties met and discussed how to move forward. Uh, ultimately, Castle Rock agreed to let this TIP amendment move forward um, for consideration while Castle Rock, CDOT, and any other stakeholders met over the course of the next 11 months to finalize a mobility hub area plan. So given this agreement, um, Dr. Cog staff is bringing this amendment back to you for consideration. Um, just as a reminder, both the Transportation Advisory Committee and the Regional Transportation Committee previously recommended this project uh, to be amended into the current TIP. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to take any comments or questions that you may have. Uh, if not, the motion before you is to move to adopt the attached amendment to the 22 to 25 tip. Thank you very much. Any questions from board members? Any proposed motions from board members? Director Peck? Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to adopt the attached amendment to the 2022-2025 Transportation Improvement Program. Thank you, Director Mauer. Second. Any discussion on the motion from members? Motion from members. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everyone. The motion Senator carries. Senator Stoltzman, uh, Commissioner Teal, abstention. Oh, I apologize, um, Commissioner Teal. Uh, any abstentions? Uh, abstained. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. I, I should be doing a better job of that. Thank you for the reminder, Director Teal. And no so the motion carries, and that takes us to our next agenda item this evening, which is um, a discussion of the draft Dr. Cog board comments on the revised proposed greenhouse gas transportation planning rulemaking. You'll find it in attachment D in your packet. And Ron Papstorf, our Director of Transportation Planning and Operations, will graciously take us through this one more time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, very happy to be here with you this evening. Uh, just a short presentation I'd like to share with the board this evening. Uh, let's see. Should be seeing the title slide of the presentation. Yes, we can. Thank you for the head nod, Madam Chair. Um, so um, again, I'm Ron, Pap Ron Papsdorf. I'm the um, division director uh, for the Transportation Planning and Operations Division at Dr. Cog. Um, we've, we've been discussing the proposed greenhouse gas transportation planning rulemaking process for several board meetings and board work sessions over the last several months. Um, I want to just do a quick, quick rule review of where we currently are in that process. Um, and we've got some uh, proposed draft Dr. Cog comments for the board's consideration this evening to submit as part of this latest round of uh, uh, public comment in the rulemaking process, and then plenty of opportunity for board discussion and direction to staff. So just by quick, quick reminder to the members of the board of directors, 
uh, this, this rulemaking officially uh, formally kicked off back in the middle of July of this year when the Transportation Commission uh, directed the CDOT staff to, uh, to initiate the rulemaking process. Uh, the the uh, notice of rulemaking happened on August 13th uh, when the proposed rule uh, was released that kicked off a 60-day uh, written comment period uh, for review of the rule. Um, on uh, we the board submitted comments uh, back in um, early October, and on October 19th, um, CDOT issued a revised proposed rule and um, uh, incorporated a number of changes that were actually included in some of uh, the board's comments to the rulemaking. As part of that revised proposed rule, the public comment period was extended uh, an, an additional 30 days till tomorrow at noon on November 18th. And then uh, so the CDOT and the commission will consider the additional public comment on the revised proposed rule. At this point, the commission is scheduled to consider adoption of the rule at their December 16th meeting, and the rule would, would then become effective on uh, February 14th. So just a quick reminder on the basic rule components, the rule amends an existing rule that governs statewide transportation planning process and the transportation planning regions process around the state. Um, there, the, uh, there is a preamble to the rulemaking, there's a definition section, there's a statewide transportation planning section in the rule um, in section four. Uh, and then there are some amendments to the regional and statewide transportation plans. And then the meat of the proposed rule is a new section eight uh, within, that, within that current rule, uh, establishing a regional greenhouse gas transportation reduction levels, a process for determining compliance. There's a section on mitigation measures. Uh, there's a section requiring confirmation and verification with the air pollution control division. Uh, and then there's an enforcement piece and a reporting component to the proposed rule. So uh, by, by way of reminder, the board submitted uh, previous comments at the last work session, we reviewed the response and how those, how those previous comments uh, were, were reflected or not in the revised proposed rule. So we're bringing forward to you a draft comment letter that includes um, basically restating all of the previous comments, but specifically calling out four four of those previous comments to kind of restate in, in this proposed uh, letter. The first, uh, the first of those comments to restate uh, requiring that MPOs and uh, CDOT prepare and publish a calibration and validation report for the travel models is part of the greenhouse gas emissions analysis uh, for their work that's required under the rule. Um, adding a provision to require sponsors of regionally significant roadway capacity projects. So in the Dr. Cog region, those are adding general purpose vehicle capacity lanes of a mile or longer um, or no new roadway facilities that are those major arterials of a mile or longer uh, to include greenhouse gas mitigation measures when including those projects in the transportation improvement program or the statewide transportation improvement program. So in other words, when a project is actually being funded through the TIP or the STIP, the project sponsors of those regionally significant roadway capacity projects should consider and include specific greenhouse gas mitigation, mitigation measures to offset potential impacts from those projects. Um, uh, there was a comment to revise um, section 8.05.2.1 to only require a waiver request for regionally, signif re regionally significant projects. So uh, if you recall, uh, there if, if we were not able to demonstrate that we were meeting the greenhouse gas emission reduction levels, um, we can request a waiver from some of the compliance measures, the restrictions on funding for specific projects. And our previous comment was that there are a number of projects that are included in our plans and in our tips that are not regionally significant, but are very important for addressing safety issues or other planning issues in the region to address our, our regional transportation planning needs that shouldn't require a waiver uh, granted by the Transportation Commission. We should be able to still do pursue those types of projects that would not have an impact on uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and then the, the fourth, the fourth um, comment that we're proposing to restate is that the rule should, should clarify the meaning of substantial increase 
um, in section 8.05.2.1.2, or CDOT and the Transportation Commission should provide some clear guidance that clarifies um, how substantial increase will be evaluated when the commission is considering waiver requests. So uh, this, this, this comment relates to those waiver requests, but there's some, there's some language that the, that the board felt was a little unclear about how the commission would consider those and the impacts of those waiver requests using that substantial increase uh, language. So those are the four comments that we're suggesting, specifically restating uh, to the commission. And then we we're bringing forward three uh, specific comments that relate to the revised proposed rule for your consideration this evening. One relates to a section that we discussed at the board work session uh, two weeks ago and the preamble. There was some new preamble language added in the revised proposal speaking to greenhouse gas mitigation measures. And again, the preamble doesn't have the force of rule, but it can set some framework and it, and it sets some, some intent. And there's a, a section that was added in this revised proposal under holistic air quality planning in the purpose of the greenhouse gas mitigation measures section of the preamble uh, to the rule that really basically uh, removes uh, the opportunity to consider mitigation measures that would be um, operational improvements that actually uh, can, can address some um, bottleneck sort of traffic congestion issues. And this is one where staff feels like uh, this, this proposal, that, that restrictive language should be taken out of the rule, um, mainly because it's inconsistent with the other provisions in the rule uh, that direct an administrative and public process that's described in the meat of the rule for selecting and confirming and verifying greenhouse gas mitigation measures. And staff feels like that process should be allowed to proceed. And that's a cooperative process under the proposed rule between the MPOs, the public and CDOT and other stakeholders to sort of do that work. And we shouldn't be, shouldn't be kind of eliminating a whole category of potential greenhouse gas uh, reduction um, investments um, kind of preemptively before that process um, has had a chance to, to proceed and conclude its work. The second of the third proposed new um, recommended comments uh, relates to the compliance section. This is 8.05. This was the enforcement section under the, under the initial proposed rule. The title's been changed to compliance. Um, but this is, um, this was, we think, a clarification of maybe a, a drafting error in the revised uh, rule. We had previously uh, commented um, on the rule that uh, the MPO should have 60 days after a determination is made by the commission to either request a waiver or request reconsideration. And that's just to allow uh, staff and the board to consider whether you would want to submit a waiver request or a reconsideration request to the commission. And that change was made. So that, that time frame was extended from 30 days to 60 days as we had originally requested. But part of the, part of the revision, uh, the revised rule proposal uh, that was released in October kind of added this, this additional uh, subsection related to the reconsideration requirements and states it should be that should happen within 30 days. We think it should be consistent with the other section that was changed. Uh, that that speaks to a reconsideration request. So this is this is simply a proposal to revise that to be consistent um, internally within the rule. And then um, the final the final proposed comment uh, for your consideration relates to a new section that was added in the revised uh, proposed rule relating to uh, reporting. Um, so section eight point zero six point two and 8.06.2.1 were added as part of the uh, revised proposal uh, that requires annual reporting on vehicle miles traveled per capita beginning September 1st of next year and requiring the commission to consider revisions to the rules in order to achieve reductions in vehicle miles traveled consistent with the intent of the rule. If three consecutive years of report show no decrease in vehicle miles traveled per capita, in any one or more areas, and those areas are statewide and the five metropolitan planning organization areas around the state. So including Dr. Cog, North Front Range, the Pikes Peak area, Pueblo, 
and the Grand Valley uh, region. So any of those areas, if that if this happened in any one of those areas, then uh, the commission uh, would be required to consider revisions to the rules. Um, staff staff recommends that um, the comment be to strike those sections from the proposed rule, um, and uh, mainly because we think the rule should remain focused on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And we believe that you know if if we're achieving the greenhouse gas emissions, there shouldn't have to be any further action um, uh, to to be pursued even if VMT per capita isn't going down. And, and it is certainly conceivable that greenhouse gas reductions can be achieved even if VMT per capita is not going down. So that, that's, that's one reason. Uh, the second reason is that um, you know, there, while there can be a correlation between vehicle miles traveled and greenhouse gas emissions, um, greenhouse gas emissions are most directly linked to fuel consumption and improved vehicle operations that reduce congestion and delay, and therefore fuel consumption uh, will in fact reduce greenhouse gas emissions, even if vehicle miles per capita, vehicle miles traveled per capita does not go down. Um, and so again, we think we should stay focused on our primary goal here, which is reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And then finally, um, this, this starts uh, with an artificially low vehicle miles traveled year due to the global pandemic. Uh, so the reporting would be, the first reporting year would be calendar year 2021. That would be the previous calendar year uh, for the report in September September 1st of 2022. Um, so VMT was drastically affected by many factors um, uh, due to that global pandemic, um, including um, high unemployment rates, um, artificially um, high uh, telecommuting uh, people, people under stay-at-home orders um, and, and other factors. And then finally, and, and the other piece is that VMT is affected by lots of factors and, and isn't a good annual measure uh, to trigger rulemaking. We really look, we look at large, we look at long-term trends in vehicle miles traveled, sort of kind of trying to compare year over year. Uh, it's not a very, it's not a very good measure to, to try to uh, uh, trigger new rulemaking. So uh, some quick, some next steps. Um, again, the comment period ends at noon tomorrow. Uh, so depending on the board's action this this evening, we will we would um, submit a comment letter to the rulemaking process by noon tomorrow. The transportation commission considers their proposed the proposed rule for adoption at their December sixteenth meeting, and then the anticipated effective date of the rule would be uh, February fourteenth. And then just just I want to end on this note. This. Uh, this rulemaking, um, while it's been going on for a long time, is, is a significant step forward. Um, there are a lot of continuing efforts and involvement that will go on well past when the commission actually adopts a greenhouse gas uh, transportation planning rule. We've got that mitigation measures procedure process to work with um, on the guidelines by April 1st of next year. We're going to have lots of consultation uh, between agencies and agreements on our model assumptions. Uh, leading into the uh, uh, emissions analysis work. There's going to be a lot of work to establish practices and, and assessing our plans against the greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. We'll have a lot more conversations with the board about that process uh, that we have to complete for next year. We have to review the Dr. Cog Regional Transportation Plan uh, by October of next year. Uh, we've got the 24 through uh, 27 uh, TIP development process during both 22 and 23, as we've talked about before, and then uh, ongoing coordination, consultation, learning, refinement of this process uh, for, for probably many years, many years ahead. Um, uh, with that, Madam Chair, I'm happy to, happy to take any questions or um, hand it back to you to manage discussion of the board. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from members on this topic? Director Vetta. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Pastorf, an outstanding uh, presentation as always. So here's my question. The first item that you covered uh, discussed a TIP application that resulted in, uh, with quotes around it, a substantial increase in uh, traffic or um, greenhouse gases. And then you suggested that that application might also include uh, some activity that would, would hopefully off offset those uh, greenhouse gas increases. 
is that covered in 8.05.2.2 or is it some other uh, section? Director Pastor. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Director Vidim, I'm just I just want to make sure I'm tracking on the on the um, on the correct piece you're asking the question about. Are you are you asking about um, that previous comment about the reasonably significant roadway capacity projects, bullet two on this slide? Uh, I think it was a bullet one. It was the very first point that you covered. You said that uh, a TIP application that resulted in uh, increased, uh, substantially increased traffic would be something to the effect it would be well advised to include some measure uh, that would counter uh, that potential increase in greenhouse gases. So I tried to uh, write this down really quick and I'm not sure I've, got, I've gotten it right. But what I thought uh, the, the specific text in your document that discussed that, I thought was uh, 8.05.2.2. And if I missed that, can you uh, correct me? Uh, I, sorry, I'm trying to find the specific section references. I this uh, so there's a lot of sections in the rule, so I want to make sure I'm talking about the right one. But I, I believe you're referencing the bullet two on the slide that's up here. Okay. Our previous comment that would require sponsors of reasonably significant roadway capacity projects yeah. to identify and include greenhouse gas mitigation measures when that project is included in a tip or a step. Uh, so. Um, I believe that's the reference you're making. We had previous, this is a previous comment that the that was included in the first round of comments uh, from Dr. Cog to the rulemaking. So this would have been a new, this would have been brand new language. It wasn't revising. It was not amending an existing, uh, an existing section of the rule because that was not language that existed in the rule. Okay. Uh, so that, that was an, that was to add. And, I, and the point, the point was that uh, for those significant roadway capacity projects that have the most likelihood of, of increasing greenhouse gas emissions, right? Because you're, you're adding vehicle capacity, a significant vehicle capacity right. uh, uh, project that those projects, when you're actually making a decision to fund those projects through federal funding, including it in a, in a tip or a step, that's when you should evaluate and identify specific mitigation measures for those projects. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director Vidham. Director Mauer. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Pastorf, um, I agree with your new comment in regards to striking um, the annual reporting of VMT. Um, and, and how your bullets are bringing up clarification of, you know, the correlation between VMT and greenhouse gas and how you can't met those don't, they're different measurements and how they don't really clarify for greenhouse gas reduction. My question is though, what you've written here is great and, and it's very clear. But how do we get that word out? Because we heard that in staff and I hear that from other councils too, where they just understand VMT, VMT, they're not getting this language like you have here. Director Papsher. Um, I, I, think, I think part of, part of getting the word in, out is kind of Making the making these comments to to the to CDOT and to the commission and and highlighting those. Uh, um, other than that, uh, you know, we're we've we've tried to we've tried to um, be pretty comprehensive in our and and frank in our conversations with the board as you have as you as you've considered the rule and thought about the rule and as as we've had a lot of dialogue uh, around the rule and sort of. Again, I, I want to state that Dr. Cog and we have goals about reducing vehicle miles traveled per capita. That that is one of our goals, and and you know th those are things that we consider in our planning work. We there's lots of good reasons to reduce vehicle miles traveled per capita in this region just to sustain good quality of life. Because you know even if every vehicle was electric, 20 years from now or 30 years from now. If every vehicle continues to be 
uh, stuck in traffic because we can't afford to build our way out of congestion. Like that's, that's not a very good quality of life. There's lots of good reasons to address that issue. I think the point the staff is making here is that conflating, conflating those issues, greenhouse gas emissions and VMT in a very direct way, uh, we just, we, we don't believe in the, in the rulemaking context is, is appropriate and sort of takes our eye off the ball of reducing greenhouse gas emissions because that's because of, because of their impact on, on climate and the statewide goals and complying with, with the state statutes. So let's, let's not conflate those issues because they, they aren't exactly, they aren't exactly equivalent. Director Mauer. Um, yeah, that's, that's very helpful. And I guess, us as directors just need Director Mauer, I'm getting um, a Director Mauer, sorry to, and not to use terms one person. Sorry to interrupt, Director Mauer. I, I think we were getting a broken signal from you during your comment there, so we didn't hear it. If you wouldn't try mind trying turning off your camera and then telling us what you were saying, sorry about that. Um, I was just saying, um, I guess, you know, we as representatives for Dr. Cog, if we as a board try to make sure that message is clear, so then that those two words, you know, the greenhouse gas reduction, and tea reduction, you know, and how that's measured. And, and you say, it is good. Sorry, Director Mauer. Director Mauer, I'm so sorry. I think there's just a bad connection at this time. We heard the beginning of your comment very clearly, so I'll come back to you in just a little bit. Sorry about the technical issue. Um, Director Papstorf, while we're on this topic, um, if you just... Uh, uh, I think Director Mauer was bringing up a, a very sage point around the political reality of where this is going from the comments and from some of the comments of transportation commissioners and others. I wonder if it's worth making a comment around how VMT will be measured if we are going to be held to this standard, since there is no way of measuring VMT at this point. I don't know if that is worth making a point on or not, but if, if we're going to be held to, a, if we think it's inevitable that we don't think we'll be able to make change in the rule in this area, would it be worth our time to make a comment around the, the fact that the state would need to develop a way to actually measure VMT if we're going to be held to this standard? Uh, I don't know, Director Papsdorf, what do you think about that? Uh, um, Chair Stolzman, I, th I think that's, I, th I think we could certainly could add some language in that section of the letter to to, to make that point a little a little clearer and, and sort of and suggest that but if 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 this some version of this provision is retained in the final um, adopted rule that there there should be some clarification about how VMT will be will be measured and, and reported uh, for the purposes of this section is that in my understanding your yes thank you director Papstorp. director Brackett? Did Director Teal have his hand up? I don't want to get ahead in line. He may have, but I called on you. Okay. Um, so, uh, can I, is it all right to make a comment at this point? Yes, please. Thank you, Director Brown. So, so uh, Ron, thanks as always for your very clear explanations of these issues. Um, I don't know how we'd wade through this topic uh, without you. Um, so, appreciate that very much. Um, very much support the. Uh, revised com the comments that we are resending uh, back on this. I think those are all great choices. Um, and I think of the new ones, the, I think the second one makes a lot of sense about the days. I, I did have a, a, a couple of comments on the, the other two comments, comment comments, call them. Um, so just while we're on the, the VMT thing, I, I, I would rather us go in a different direction um, than, than the comment that's being proposed here. Uh, I, you know, Ron, you make a good point that VMT and GHG emissions are, are not the same, but I think we know that they're they're strongly correlated. 
um, particularly uh, while we're still working on the electrification of the fleet, which has a very long way to go um, at this point. So um, I, I think retaining you know, some uh, VMT measures in the rule would be very helpful. And I, I don't believe this is prescriptive here. It's not saying that, uh, that you must do things uh, very differently if uh, VMT isn't on the exact trajectory that we're looking for, but that there uh, we would consider revisions to the rules, which, which seems uh, not unreasonable. So I, I'd advocate instead for going in the direction that um, uh, Director Stoltzman was saying um, about clarifying how we would measure and how we would accomplish that. Um, and then I also think that your last point is a really good one about what year we're looking at to start. Uh, so you want to establish your baseline from um, a reasonable place and 2020 is uh, certainly not a normal year. So um, those would be my um, requests in this area. Um, I guess I will leave it at that. Thank you. And so um, I think we will we'll have substantial debate on these different points. And so at some point, I just want to frame for the where we are going to need to come to consensus around these. Um, and have a vote at some point, I would imagine. And so just please, if folks, as we have this debate and dialogue, start thinking through what kind of motions you'll wanna make and maybe draft them down so that when the time comes, you'll be prepared to make a motion for the board to consider. Uh, Director Jones. Thank you, uh, Mayor Stolzman. Um, I, I agree with what Aaron was getting at, and I, I believe you were getting at um, it. I appreciate, Ron, your presentation and your reasoning and thinking this through. For me, it, VMTs, they aren't uh, greenhouse gases necessarily, but there's such a tight correlation. And so they are kind of conflated already. Um, and I think people know the difference between uh, being vehicle mile traveled and greenhouse gas. They, they understand it, and they understand there's a correlation. And I'd hate to make this the perfection of the enemy of the good in this case. Uh, this is one of the better measures we have and we should be using it. And furthermore, I think the bill directs us to do that in uh, Senate Bill 21260 in uh, Section 30, 43, 1, 128, Parent 3. I'll just read part of it. The development and metropolitan planning organizations to take additional steps in the planning process for regionally significant transportation capacity projects to account for the impacts on the amount of, here it is, statewide greenhouse gas pollution and statewide vehicle miles traveled. So I don't, I think we should support the legislation and not make this comment on uh, BMTs. Uh, I think it, it, we should go with what's already there. Thank you, Director Jones. Director Teal. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I would actually like to um, speak in favor of uh, adopting these comments as presented by staff. And I mean, I, I feel, well, this is, uh, and by the, Madam Chair, please correct me if I'm wrong, but this is our third, fourth time uh, through um, uh, comment sessions. And of course, we've all had an opportunity in our own municipalities and counties to submit our own independent comments. And so, I mean, I feel like that these comments as prepared by staff by Mr. Uh, Papsdorf are actually um, probably very appropriate as comments uh, from um, the uh, MPO. Um, it certainly is not inclusive of all of the comments uh, we submitted in the Douglas County Subregional. Um, and however, I think it is a very good statement of where we've had some good consensus reached uh, in our prior conversations. And so um, knowing, of course, that there is not a motion on the floor yet, but Chair, I would submit that um, I would speak in favor of uh, adopting these comments um, uh, as the comments from Dr. Cog to the rulemaking committee. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, Director Teal. Director Mulvey. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, I wanna thank staff because there has been so much time spent on these, so much uh, deliberation, so much comment that you've heard from us, that the amount of time that you put into this, the amount in the package, 
the redlining, the chart has been unbelievable. So I really, I do want to thank you for that. Um, one thing in particular that hasn't been articulated by me yet, because um, I have spoken up quite a bit in this discussion over the days that we've discussed it, was that on 8.05 compliance versus enforcement, um, I, I do really like the change on that very much. And then also because it makes sense, um, it's reasonable and it's fair. Furthermore, on the um, preamble, the change there, um, it does echo something I said in our last work session um, and something that was also said previously. But I think the most important thing that was said in my view was that there are a lot of things that we can look at already to reduce greenhouse gases and we're already taking care of it and that there the whole process is being implemented and we don't need to do extra more we're already doing quite a bit and this actually takes care of it and to make changes that would be inequitable I don't think would be fair and these changes make it more fair and more equitable across the board for vulnerable communities as well as all of our communities and the fact that our that Dr. Cox staff has listened to everybody all of the vulnerable communities, all of the elements has, has meant a lot to me. So thank you for that. Thank you, Director Mulvey. Director Shaw? Thank you. Uh, uh, my comment is about the slide that is currently showing on, on page 10. Um, I too believe that uh, staff's recommendation is something that uh, I believe has good consensus around already. Um, I, I believe very strongly in bullet two that although uh, VMT may certainly influence the greenhouse gas levels, they are not directly correlated. And I fear that uh, in this particular rule, um, tying them could be uh, inappropriate, um, even though on different avenues, certainly Dr. Cog will pursue VMT reduction because it is it is important. And and um, the the last thing I would like to say is that um, VMT is somewhat of an estimated figure, whereas greenhouse gases can be scientifically measured in the air at certain locations. So uh, to, to base or, or include VMT um, in this way seems problematic to me. So um, I'm in favor of um, staff's recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. So thank you very much, Director Shaw. It seems like there are no further questions. And I do want to thank staff as well, just for taking the time to take us through all of this complex material. Um, it would be helpful, I believe, for the discussion at this point, if folks would put a motion on the floor, and that doesn't preclude people from offering friendly amendments to the motion and further discussion on the motion. It just would be helpful to move the conversation forward. Director Odoricio? Uh, yeah, I think this is a great conversation for us to have. And this bill initially wasn't uh, designed to be a VMT bill. And in fact, one of the ways that we got some consensus to support this bill across the board, across Democrats, Republicans, North, South, East, West, was to say that this is not a VMT bill. And we did a great job getting it done. On that note, I will acknowledge that currently VMT is a great uh, there is a coalition, but there are other things that can reduce um, greenhouse gases that don't reduce VMT and that's EV, it's congestion, things like that. With that said, uh, I'm gonna recommend that we um, know that we're not gonna get rid of VMT discussion in the future, but I think that we should adopt the staff's recommendation as it is now, move forward, but also uh, just keep an open mind as we, as we look forward to trying to reduce congestion and those other things and increase other options for driving in the future. 
Uh, I just don't want to do it at the expense of the current effort. I think staff makes a lot of good points. Um, I acknowledge that in today's day and age, you know, uh, what Director Jones was saying and um, and Aaron and I, I get it, but just I think we can we can address that a little bit more later. Um, and let, let's let's get this thing moving. So my motion is to uh, approve as presented by staff. There's a motion on the table to accept the staff recommendation and move it forward as a letter. Is there a second? Director Teo? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Director Brackett? Yeah, well, thanks for uh, considering my comments earlier. It sounds like that's not the will of the board to go in that direction. So I'm happy to go to a consensus position and support the motion on the table. Thank you, Director Brockett. Any other discussion of the motion from members? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, everyone. The motion carries. And so staff will get the letter out before noon tomorrow for the comment period. And that takes us to the committee reports. Uh, first, we have a, a, I'll actually skip mine so I can get my notes pulled up. And so we'll take a report from the Metro Mayor's Caucus, Director Starker. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Mayor, uh, Metro Mayor's Caucus has not met since our last meeting, so we do not have a report tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so I will report on the State Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, we had a presentation of the 2023 draft budget from Jeff Studemeyer. Um, it, it was you know, preliminary because at the time we didn't know exactly how much money would be coming, but it was further along than it had been. So um, CDOT is carefully working through the um, Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act, and they had us all practice saying IIJA as fast as we could because that'll be the new acronym. And one, um, one uh, commissioner at STAC recommended that we say it Asia, like the Steely Dan album, so I kind of liked that. So I'm going to start calling it Asia, and we'll see if it catches. Um, and then we talked about the 10-year plan update with fiscal constraints. So given the realities of the budget and everything, talking about what the 10-year plan process will be. And I'm happy to report back that CDOT um, heard our request to try to align that update process for, for Region 1 and Region 4, which is our regions, with our process for the Regional Transportation Plan and the other plans that we'll have to amend in the coming year because of the greenhouse gas rule. So that was much appreciated. And um, we got uh, some more information on greenhouse gas rulemaking, which this board has heard. We had an update on the snow staying service. And um, probably most interestingly, we had a discussion with the group on the multimodal options fund update. And the State Transportation Advisory Committee recommended on to the TC uh, a share formula that keeps our share of the MMOF at a very similar rate to what it was in previous years. And so I'm grateful for the stack for accept accepting that recommendation. Thank you. And next that takes us uh, to the report from the Metro Area County Commissioners. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Commissioner Baker. And uh, the last meeting we had was on September 16th, and I've previously reported about that meeting. Uh, we have not met because we're gearing up for a fall retreat on the 3rd of December, and uh, Adams County is going to be hosting that. And we're also sending in our applications or our, our reservations for the uh, Metro <coughs> Mayor's Caucus. <laughs> Excuse me, and the um, MAC at, uh, annual regional reception at the governor's mansion on twelve sixteen. Thank you very much, Director Baker. And I heard there is no report on the advisory committee on aging this month, but we'll get one next time they meet. Next up, we have a report from the Regional Air Quality Council. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, regional Air Quality Council met on November fifth. Uh, the first item was a was a discussion on the draft 2022 budget and work program, um, and which will be voted on at the December meeting. Uh, we had a great presentation on the results of this, this year's public awareness campaign, Simple Steps, Better Air. Uh, uh, Sarah Goodwin on RAC staff, she did a tremendous job of, uh, of running us through um, some of the, the ad buys and the, um, and the eyes that have been on the, uh, on the campaign over the, the last ozone season. 
Um, our very own Melissa Balding and, and Robert Spots gave an update, gave this the presentation on the 2020 annual report on traffic congestion that they gave us last month. They did a tremendous job, of course, and we had a good discussion about that. And the last item that was discussed was a um, was a conversation about wildfire smoke and the impacts on, on our air quality. Uh, we had a, we had a um, representative from the Colorado Department of Natural Resources provide that presentation, and it was very enlightening. It was I, that's one of the things I really enjoy about RAC is some of these topics are not you know I'm I'm on the mobile source side, so I I, I know a lot about that, but but some of the other stuff has just been uh, tremendous, and I I would encourage anybody who's interested in these topics to participate in those meetings. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Executive Director X. Next, we have a report from the E-470 Authority. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> we had a couple of minor contract uh, uh, issues that, that the board resolved, but the big news coming out of the November 4th meeting is our toll rate policy. Uh, the board unanimously approved a toll rate, a three-year toll rate policy, which uh, decreases toll rates. So starting uh, January 1st of 2022, Toll Plaza A, which is located in Douglas County, will re be reduced by 10 cents a transaction, and the remainder of the, the toll plazas will be reduced by 5 cents. And in subsequent years, that, that should be the same thing. The board will take a look at that on an annual basis and ratify or potentially alter or change that. Um, my bias would probably be lower. So with that, um, that is my report. Thank you. Thank you, Director Dyack. Next, we have a report from CDOT, Director White. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a, a few things to highlight tonight. The uh, chair already spoke to the discussion we had at the stack meeting on the passage of the infrastructure bill, but I'll just uh, hit a, a couple additional points on that. That is a huge accomplishment for transportation funding uh, for nationwide and for Colorado. It's a $1.2 trillion bill altogether. But you've probably heard a number that about $3.9 billion is coming to Colorado. An important uh, uh, issue there is that of that, about $900 million is actually new money. Um, the rest of it is a continuation of, of funds that we usually get. Still, $900 million is nothing to sneeze at. It comes um, to us through a variety of programs, including money set aside for uh, bridges, for addressing risk and resiliency for transit. Um, so a really exciting development. And there is a lot of money set aside for competitive grants. So buckle up. Um, we are entering a, a five-year era of competitive grant programs, which is good because Colorado often does very well on those. Um, and speaking of grants, I did want to uh, give a congratulations to the city of Denver that was awarded a raise grant uh, for 13.9 million for the Washington Street Mobility Project. So that's great. See that money coming, nice neck, uh, coming to Colorado. Um, I think I will leave it with that tonight. Um, thank you. Thanks. Have a good evening. Thank you, Director White. And next we have a report on fast tracks from Director Van Meter. Thank you, Chair. I have two items to update the board on. One is regarding the Northwest Rail Line Peak Service Study. I've mentioned this a couple of times previously and just want to give you a status update. RTD advertised a request for proposals on September 24th and received proposals um, technical proposals from consultant teams to support RTD and the local jurisdictions along the Northwest Rail Line in the conduct of that peak service study. We received submittals on November 4th, and RTD staff and um, stakeholders are now reviewing those proposals and uh, will be meeting in the near future to um, try to come to a selection on a team to support us all in the conduct of that study. So it's uh, an important milestone towards getting that study going and underway. Again, that's to look at a peak service scenario, three trains in the AM from Longmont to Denver Union Station and three trips in the PM from Denver Union Station to Longmont. 
stakeholders are engaged, including um, uh, uh, folks from Dr. Cog um, or folk from Dr. Cog um, in the review of the technical proposal. So appreciate Dr. Cog's support on that process. The other item also relates to the same fast tracks corridor, and that is what we call the Longmont Transit Facility. Longmont um, calls it the first in Maine. And um, RTD has a fast tracks allocation of $17 million for construction of a park and ride, bus terminal, and eventual rail terminal for the B line in Longmont. We've been working cooperatively for a number of years with Longmont in developing both a transit oriented development plan for the area that Longmont led, as well as a joint infrastructure master plan. We've gotten to a point where the two parties are in general agreement on what that facility will look like, how it will be funded and how we'll proceed forward. And to that end in October, the RTD Board of Directors granted our general manager and CEO the authority to negotiate and execute all documents and funding transfers necessary for the design, construction, and maintenance of this new facility at First in Maine and Longmont. So those are the two items that I of um, newsworthy significance regarding fast tracks. Thank you, Director Van Meter. And um, just a point of clarification, would you like us to change your name listed on the um, agenda documents in the future to William? I see your name under your face on the Zoom listed as William, and we'd be happy to list it however you like. Yeah, I think Bill is fine. All right, thank you very I'm much. I'm a Bill. Just making sure we weren't calling you the wrong name all these years. So um, folks, if you look in your packet, you'll find two informational items. Um, there's the preview of the 2021 state legislative session, and there's the Denver region data brief, both great informational items in your packet. And you'll also find staff contact information on those. If you have questions about those informational items, please do reach out um, and you'll be able to have a discussion and as much or as little interaction on any of those questions as you like. And so our next meeting is December 15th, 2021. And I would like to ask if there are any other matters tonight by members. Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. Good night everybody. Thank Good you. Night. Happy holidays. Good night. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.